opening session of the 159th ARL membership meeting. Welcoming remarks by Carol Mandel and introductions of the new ARL member representatives. I'm uh, Carol Mandel. I'm the Dean of Libraries at New York University and President of ARL for another few hours. And, um, and so I get the honor and pleasure of um, welcoming you to the, let's see, 159th membership meeting of the Association of Research Libraries. I get to declare it open with this gavel. I guess that's what I get to do. Yeah, here you are. Um, so <laughs> one of the first things, um, just, uh, just to get oriented, so I have a few remarks before we launch into the really excellent program that we have for us all this afternoon, um, is just to make a few introductions and orientations you know, it's a meeting, we need a, a little bit of logistics, etc. Um, I think one of the things I want to do is uh, recognize um, the members of the board of directors so that you know who they are, those of you who are guests uh, or new, and um, realize that um, how important that board is to the association. They do wonderful work and they work very hard, and um, they're also. Um, ears open to you, and that's why it's important that you know who they are, and um, and I really thank them. Um, please uh, don't applaud. I know some of them would like to be applauded, but let's just do that. Um, because, and we do, and you can applaud them, you know, at the end or something, but let's just get on, on with this. Um, so, but please do board members stand so folks know who you are. Um, Deb Carver, University of Oregon. Colleen Cook. Um, McGill, Colleen, uh, Carol Pitts Dietrichs, Ohio State. I'm not, there she goes. Ernie Ingalls, University of Alberta. Deborah Jacobs from Duke University. Ann Kenny from Cornell. Wendy Luger, University of Minnesota. Jim Mullins, Purdue. Sandy Yee from Wayne State. Another person who could borrow my stool when she wants to. <laughs> um, AR, uh, ARL President-Elect and Vice President Winston Tabs from Johns Hopkins. Is he here, Winston? There you go. Um, past President, Brinley Franklin University of Connecticut. Um, in addition, and I, I really, um, it's wonderful to work with you folks. In addition, um, board members include um, the ex officio, the chairs of our uh, strategic direction steering committees, and I, it's, um, I can't tell you how terrific it is to have them and to be on the board and be able to talk in an integrated way about programs. And that's um, Carton Rogers, who um, is the chair of the Transforming Research Library Steering Committee from Penn. Is Carton here? And I know he certainly will. Uh, be interested in hearing from any of you that want to talk about board business or his committee's work. Jim Williams from uh, University of Colorado at Boulder, Public Policies. And Ann Wolpert, MIT, um, Reshaping Scholarly Communication. Thank you. Um, and I hope you all know Charles Lowry, ARL Executive Director, but in case you're not sure what he's wearing to the meeting, there he is. Okay. <laughs> So um, together, these really are the people that um, keep ARL policies and programs in place and looking ahead and aimed at you. So um, they're important for you to know. Please, please talk with them during the breaks. Um, so this is a really, the next part is introducing people that many of you may not yet know, and I hope you will soon. And that um, is, is that is our new member representatives. Um, we have four of them with us here today, and four of our old members, um, or older, um, uh, or just established members um, who have <laughs> agreed to introduce them. Actually, the first the first introducer isn't is isn't isn't old to us or that established. He was just introduced recently, so we get to see him again. Um, so first. Um, Simon Liu will be um, introducing Joyce Backus to us. Um, Joyce is the new director at the National Library of Medicine. So you can use the podium or you can use the, the mic if you both want to come on up. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? <laughs> uh, 
to this particular organization, the Association for Research Libraries. Uh, currently, Joyce, she is the Deputy Associate Director for Library Operations at the National Library of Medicine. Prior to that, she was the Deputy Chief for the Public Service Division. In that capacity, Joyce developed and deployed the Million Plus Connect. Uh, this particular services link the patient's portal and their electronic health records to authoritative information from NIH, NLM, and other resources. In the past, Joyce also had served as a, the section head for the reference and web services. She is also the head of web management team, a system librarian, and also a reference librarian. So Joyce um, has joined, has been with uh, National Library of Medicine since 1985, uh, as start as a um, so-called associate fellow. Right. In the past many years, Joyce has a distinguished career. She has received numerous, many, many professional recognitions. Let me just kind of list a few, a few of them. First is we call a Thompson Scientific, Thompson Scientific Frank B. Rogers. So information and advancement award from uh, the Medical Library Association, and also Ida and George Price, uh, Eric Price from also the same thing, uh, the Medical Library Association. She has also received the Merit and the Director Award from the National Institute of Health, the Frank B. Roger Award from the Border Region of the National Library of Medicine, and also most recently, the Innovative Innovation Award from the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. So Joyce has a very distinguished and outstanding career. She has a AB degree in sociology and also English from Duke University, a master degree in library science from the Catholic University of America. So with that, let's give her a big welcome. Thank you, Simon, and welcome, Joyce. Um, and Ann Kenny is going to introduce our new colleague from Harvard University Libraries, Helen Shenton. So I'm one of those old directors who um, can't uh, do what Simon does, which is to rattle it off the top of uh, his head. Um, it's been decades since I've been able to do that. So, but I'm very, very pleased uh, to um, introduce Helen Shenton, the first executive director of the new Harvard University Library. Helen, we're really pleased to welcome you uh, to our midst, not just for the opportunity to get to know you, but we're really curious about what Harvard Library is doing. <laughs> and I thought she brought some really terrific talents and traits uh, to the table. First is her ability to imagine a new way of doing things and then actually bringing that about. At the British Library, for instance, uh, Helen was charged with confronting many of the issues that Harvard Library, indeed all of us, uh, face today. Digital preservation, library space, storage of print and digital materials, and oh yeah, evolving uh, patron needs. Helen transformed the British Library's collection care department into a world-class operation, include, including the establishment and opening of the state-of-the-art uh, Center for Conservation. She's a trained bookbinder and is probably the only brother Helen in this room, a title she holds as an associate member of the Art Workers Guild founded by William Morris. Moving beyond physical objects care, she helped build digital preservation expertise and costing analysis into the very fiber of the British Library. 
In 2004, you may not remember this, Helen, we served on a panel together at the British Library, and she was the first person I heard speculate about uh, the role of a digital conservator. Helen was also instrumental in massive digitization projects at the British Library, including the virtual reunification of the Codex Syn Sinaiticus, the earliest New Testament in the world. Uh, she has also, to her claim to fame, until July of 2009, she was one of only several people living who'd actually seen all parts of the Codex in the four locations of London, St. Petersburg, Leipzig, and, oh yes, St. Catherine's Monastery in Sinai. But by the afternoon of July 6, 2009, after the British uh, Library had released the online Codex, uh, 20 million people had viewed it. Second, Helen has a way of promoting collaboration and encouraging others, but then knowing when to get out of the way and not get bogged down in the details. In the early 2000s, Cornell, the British Library, the University College London, and the Digital Preservation Coalition collaborated in a digital preservation training program. An email list was set up to promote the exchange of ideas, and folks were given the uh, choice to opt out. While confirming her support for the program, Helen wrote, I'm very happy not to be on the list during the development stage, and she ended, good luck. <laughs> yeah, I still got that email. <laughs> Third, Helen takes people at their word. Little did I know when I offered to help in any way I could with her transition at Harvard that that would extend to my AUL for technical services moving to Cambridge. <laughs> I can tell you, Helen, that he's very excited to be there and to be working with you in this brave new effort. But to all of you, I'm warning you that uh, watch, watch your rhetorical flourishes around Helen. And when all else fails, a final trait of Helen's will come in quite handy. Her British accent, which most Americans just find irresistible. That and throwing around a few temporizing but soothing terms such as whilst, she does use whilst, uh, and quite should go a long way when dealing with recalcitrant faculty, immovable staff, and an administration that sees the library transition as a prototype for the rest of Harvard. So, Helen, welcome to our side of the pond and to our world. Thank you. Thank you, Anne, and welcome, Helen. Uh, now, Susan Netter uh, is going to be introducing Denise Stevens to us. Uh, Denise, uh, who is now in charge of UC Santa Barbara Library. <laughs> Thank you, and I need to tell Denise that I'm not also going to be able to um, do what Simon did. I have my notes with me, and I prefer established, um, okay. Carol, established, that was just my error. because I really am old. I saw someone look. <laughs> I saw someone looking over that lineage chart of ARL directors, and I think we've got to stop putting that out. Um, I must begin by crediting my colleague, Karen Wittenberg, with discovering Denise Stevens and getting her on the right path at UVA. And I say I must because we got into a bidding war as to who was going to introduce Denise. And, um, in winning, I had to make that concession. So um, you all know Karn. Uh, I was privileged to have the opportunity to be Denise's mentor in the ARL Leadership and Career Development Program. And that's a program that I value highly and really worked hard within ARL to establish that. And I think to be able to. Now, I'm known as um, one who likes to fast track people and people with talent and leadership potential. And my mantra is that one should take a job for which one is not quite ready. Don't take a job that won't challenge you and that won't require you to learn about yourself. And I tend to push people out of the nest and I find that they fly. Well, Denise Stevens has put me and my philosophy to the test and has flown at supersonic speed. 
As I worked with her and became a colleague, I was awestruck at her intelligence and willingness to challenge herself to take risks, and she has surpassed all of my expectations. Khan and I have really viewed this with a sense of wonder. And I've edited this so much that I can hardly <laughs> read it. <laughs> Um, Denise started her career in research libraries at the University of Oklahoma as a library assistant and received her MLS from that school in 1993. Now I want you to start counting because that's 18 years ago. She joined the University of Virginia Library, kudos to Khan, Khan that year and served in various program leadership roles for seven years. Uh, after participating in the inaugural ARL Leadership and Career De development program cohort in 97-98, that's four years out, and that's when she became my protege. And I have to say that I did go around bragging that I had the best um, <laughs> fellow in the program, and I hope I'm not insulting anyone. There may have been people tied with her as well. Uh, following that, she served a short stint as department head at University of Kansas before moving on to work with Peter Graham at AUL as AUL for Public Services at Syracuse University and um, she was really very helpful to Peter and, and stepping up and serving as acting university librarian. So there she is, that's number one um, research library. Now um, Denise then went on to become Vice Provost for Information Services and CIO and Strategic and Organizational Research Librarian at the University of Kansas, where the library reported to her. So now that's two. Now Denise Stevens has joined the University of California, Santa Barbara. And she joined them in July, and I think her UC colleagues are going to be thrilled to have her as part of the team. I am very, very proud to introduce you to Denise Stevens, a smart, savvy, witty, and fun colleague who makes things happen. Her chief interests are organizational development, assessment, and information infrastructure development. And I look forward to see what her next accomplishments are going to be. Welcome, Denise. <laughs> Thank you, Susan Ann. Welcome, Denise. And now, Karen Wittenberg did get her turn at introducing someone as well. And because uh, she's going to introduce us to Diane Parr Walker, who's now at Notre Dame. So, certainly all the good things she says about Denise. Um, but forget believing about the bidding war. She actually is blackmailing me because she knows way too much about my sordid past. <laughs> so, but it is my pleasure to introduce Diane Walker, who came to UVA as the music librarian, and like so many great music librarians, was recruited somewhat reluctantly into library administration. At UVA, she has been responsible at one time or another for virtually every area of the library, and her leadership has made every part of the library better. Most recently, she was deputy university librarian, and in that role, she made the library ever more visible and initiated a number of powerful collaborations. In addition, she was co-PI for our eight very successful annual series of the Mellon-funded Scholarly Communications Institute. And they wrapped up this. We wouldn't let her go until she finished the last one. Um, Diane is rather reserved. So undoubtedly, <laughs> undoubtedly, I have already gone on far too long for her comfort. <laughs> but I would be remiss if I didn't mention. I know that we're, I'm not supposed to speak, but I did tell her two sentences. <laughs> I'll be short. <laughs> the characteristics. She is unfailingly gracious and calm, no matter the situation. She treats everyone with respect. She has successfully mentored colleagues, both at UVA and within the profession at large. She does the right things, and she does them well. She is quick to give credit to others, even when she has done the lion's share of the work. 
In addition, she is a wonderful dining companion who enjoys good food and drink, a critical qualification in my view. <laughs> Certainly for a colleague of mine, but also for a university librarian. Uh, she makes the best martini I have ever had, and she was kind enough to part with the recipe before she left. I promise not to share it. <laughs> she gardens, enjoys the outdoors, is an avid traveler, and is supremely musical. She also has a quick wit and very wry sense of humor. Diane will lead the Notre Dame libraries into the future they so richly deserve, and you will enjoy her as a colleague. <laughs> Thank you both very much, and welcome, Diane. Um, we now have a little special announcement on the program that um, a little, I'm going to let Simon tell you what it is. <laughs> Good afternoon again. Uh, before I join any, uh, I serve as an associate director at the National Library of Medicine for 10 years. Today is really my great honor and distinct pleasure to present to ARL the resolution, a resolution from the Board of Regents of the National Library of Medicine. So here it goes. Can I need to <laughs> I need to make sure that everything I read is right. Okay, thank you. To thank the Association of Research Libraries for its long-standing effort in supporting of research libraries and the diverse community they serve, and its long support for the National Library of Medicine on the occasion of the library's 175th anniversary. ARL has since 1932 foster cooperative actions to improve the capability and the collections of North America research libraries and to promote equitable access and effective use of recorded knowledge in support of teaching, research, scholarship, and community services. NLM has benefited from membership in ARL since 1948 and has relied upon its training, evaluations, presentation printing, and public policy programs. ARL has collected and compiled statistics to monitor the evolution of the field and to inform decision making by decreeing, describing the collections, expenditure, staffings, and service activity of ARL member libraries. ARL held the Association of Academic Health Science Libraries and NLM to establish a successful leadership fellows program to prepare future directors of academic health science libraries. ARL has steadfastly defend a balance between the right of the producers and the user of the work under copyright and has been a proponent of creative copyright arrangements and open access publishing models. ARL has been a strong advocate and a defender of the role of government agencies in developing and disseminating innovative information services including NLM's main lines, Department Centrals, and also PubCam. And ARL, through advocacy, education, and strategic alliances, has been a key supporter of public access to the result of federally fund research and the NIH public access policy. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Regents of the National Library of Medicine thank the Association of Research Libraries for its long and steadfast support of the National Library of Medicine and for its tireless effort on behalf of research libraries 
and their mission to increase access to research information for the benefit of the people of the United States of America and the world. Virginia Tenji, the chairman of Board of Regents, the National Library of Medicine. Thank you.